have seen in the previous installments that men and women are totally different, which means their needs are different. What a man needs is different from what a woman needs. God commands for the husband to love his wife because that's what she needs most. She needs that love. She needs that nurturing. She needs for her heart to be stroked gently. She needs security. She needs for her heart to be stroked. She needs security. Protection. But God commands for the wives to reverence or respect her husband because more than anything, that's what he needs. Amen. He needs his head stroked. In other words, his ego. Because men have ego out of this world. So, the woman gets her heart stroked, the man gets his ego stroked. Everybody gets stroked. No pun intended. And everybody gets pleased. Make him feel like he is a king, not a thing. In marriage, there must be sacrifice. And if both husband and wife are seeking to please God first, they will automatically please each other. Amen. If you're seeking to please God, you will automatically please your mate. And that's a command. And see, God knows what's best for you. So that's why the man should seek to please his wife. The woman should seek to please her husband. Please your mate. The Lord knows what we need. Amen. And he's made this clear in his word. Now, the worst thing that a wife can do is disrespect her husband. That's right. Because that will only drive him from her. That's right. Because for a man, respect is at the top of the list. Right. That's why a lot of times a man will walk out on a mouthy, disrespectful wife Amen. to find a quiet, humble, submissive, respectful woman who will lift him up and stroke his ego. Amen. Now, he ought not do that, and that's wrong to walk out like that. But if he's not spiritual, he just might do that. The majority of men, not all, but the majority of men that I've encountered hates a nagging wife. And when she nags, 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 nags. <laughs> Proverbs 14 verse 1 says, The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. So the wise wife woman builds up the house, makes it better. But the foolish woman, she's going to do everything she can to Tear it down. Mm. So the scripture says that a wise woman builds a home. She makes it better. He is saying, make it better. Amen. But that foolish woman, she's going to destroy it. Huh? And it says, with her, with her own hands. Right. In other words, she's doing this. And if she's doing it, don't go looking to play the blame game. That means she needs to look in the mirror Amen. and blame herself. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The ladies 
it, a man even went south for the winter. <laughs> a real godly woman doesn't operate independently of her husband. We saw a little bit of that last week. She does not operate independently. Why? Because she is in a marriage. Amen. Marriage is a covenant. Amen. Now, I know that's not popular <laughs> for the day's walk, but God might try to be popular. And he's just going to tell the truth. Amen. I'm not trying to be popular. I'm just going to tell the truth. If God says it, I'm saying what God said. And it does not matter what society, the culture says, what your best friends say, what the majority say, what matters is what God says. And that's all. Now listen. A lot of times, people don't want to listen to the truth. They don't want to hear the truth when it finds them. If it doesn't find you, and it's going all everywhere else, hitting everybody else, oh! <laughs> but when it finds you, all of a sudden, folk get locked up. <laughs> and they take on this attitude of rebellion. They let their feelings get in the way. Yes. And it's not really personal. It's just the truth. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, you will know the truth. And it will make you free. Amen. No, notice what he said. It, you shall know it. Now you can only know it when you hear it. Now, if you don't know it, it can't do much for you. But when you know it, it calls for a response, which means to embrace it, receive it, not repel it, not get mad at it, not get indifferent at it, but to receive it, embrace it, apply it. And that truth that you know now will set you free. Amen. But it's sexually free when you know it. And I like to tell people so they can know. You got to be willing to swallow your pride when the word finds you. Proverbs 12 verse 1 says, Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But who, he who hates correction, what is is stupid. Okay. <laughs> stupid. The Bible calls some folks stupid. Amen. Some people are stupid. Amen. If you hate correction, it says. Some people might be receiving a little bit of correction here today. <laughs> in this series. If you hate correction, if you say, I'm going to wait till this series is over, I, I, I won't be back for the rest of this one. Because I don't like what he's saying. If you hate correction, you are stupid. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He's stupid. No, the Bible did. I'm saying what it says. The person who hates correction is stupid. Do we have any stupid people in the house today. That's the time to not say amen. <laughs> For, pro, Proverbs 21 verse 9 says, better to dwell in a corner of a house top than in a house shared with a contentious woman. I think I quoted that last week. Yeah. We read it this week. Yeah. Verse 19 says, Better to dwell in the wilderness 
than with a contentious, angry woman. Wow, that's saying a lot. We look at a woman who's always angry. This woman stays angry. And she loves to argue. She's argumentative. She's quarrelsome. Loves to argue. A nasty disposition. Hmm, do you know somebody like that? Is that you that I'm talking about? It says, it's better to dwell in the wilderness than with that woman. Now, the wilderness is dead, barren, dry, no sign of life there, miserable living. But it's, it's better to, to pack up than to pack a tent and live up there than to dwell with that woman. Better to go on the house top and pick out a corner in the house, on top of the house. See, back in that day, Israel, uh, in ancient times, the rules of houses were flat. They were flat. They weren't like this. They were flat. So you can go up there and have park. people had parties up there. They had gatherings up there. They ate up there. They slept up there. They did all sorts of activities up on top of the house. It says it's better for you to go get in a corner of the house top, the man, which is really inconvenient living. Yeah. <laughs> but it's better to go there can to live inside the comfortable house with that contentious woman. Amen. Amen. That's saying a lot. Amen. And a lot of men feel like that. Amen. Proverbs 27 verse 15 and 16 says, a continual dripping on a rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Drip, 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 drip. When is it going to stop raining? Drip, 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 drip. When is she going to stop dripping? Drip, 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 drip. I got to get away. I got to get out. Drip, drip. Continual dripping, it said. Some wives are like drips. <laughs> He said, she's just like the dripping on a rainy day. And it says, whoever restrains her restrains the wind. Ooh-wee. And guess what else? And, and he and grasps, grasps oil with his right hand. Isn't that something? In other words, you, it's easier to grab oil, which is slippery, and you can't grab it. But it's easier to grab that than to try to restrain this woman. You can bottle the wind, which is really impossible, <laughs> before you can get this woman to act right. I ought to hear some men somewhere. Y'all scared to talk? Pretty sure I'm not straight up. We'll be in the doghouse. Oh, put your big boy britches on up in here. Amen. With an amen. Amen. Hey, look. <laughs> the Bible doesn't pull any punches. It, sure it tells it just like it is. Sure and it doesn't care who. Don't like it. Amen. That's right. That's right. Turn to First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. Let's look at it. Verse one. And it says, "Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husband." See, we live in a culture that doesn't like that word submit. And some other verses that says obey. Right. Obey. Ain't obey that fool. 
<laughs> that that's today's wicked feminist movement, which I talked about last week. That's that attitude. I ain't listening to no man. I'm my own woman. That's the thinking and the speech of the devil. It is. Amen. That's not a godly woman. Amen. Wives, submit to your own husband. There's been times where I've done marriages and I do it the traditional way where I say promise to obey and blah, 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 blah. And some women want to get tight-lipped and don't want to say it and think I ought to change that word. I don't change it. You're going to say obey. You're going to say it just like the Bible says. The Bible says that I'm saying what the Bible says. Amen. Isn't that chauvinistic? Okay, so call it God chauvinist. Because God wrote this. This was here before I got here. I'm the male man. Delivering the mail. And a special delivery to somebody who has a rebellious habit. Amen. Amen. See, this will this will help you yes. not hurt you. Yes. Amen. 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 So I always say, no, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say obey. So you want me to marry you? I'm I'm saying it. So I've had nobody, I've never had anybody to uh repel or rebel against that. Because that's the way it's going down. We're going to keep it real. We're going to do it God's way. Yes. Amen. 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 It's a be submissive to your own husbands that even if some do not obey the word, talking about the husband, even if some husbands do not obey the word, he's not saved. He's not following God. He might be a heathen. Even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. See that? It is the way that she conducts and carries herself. The woman who is serving the Lord, the wife who is serving the Lord and has an unsaved husband who's not serving the Lord, ain't thinking about the Lord, she's kind of doing this thing on her own. It says he can be won, actually, by her conduct. And it says without a word. That means zip your lip. In other words, you can't be constantly badgering the man. Uh, it's tight, but it's right. You can't be like a machine gun. He getting machine gun shot with the tongue, coming in the house and going out now. You think he wants to serve your Lord? Because of the example that you are displaying? Look at what the Bible says. If they don't obey the word, they without a word be won by the conduct of their wives. He has to see that Christ-like character in his wife. Amen. Now, <clears throat> this ain't part-time either. Amen. This ain't do it for a season. Right. Well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act Christ-like for a while. Then after two weeks, because, see, the devil's going to use them to make you get out of character. <laughs> the, the 
the devil going to use them to really now because you made the commitment to, okay, I'm going to do what the Bible says. Guess what? The devil's coming. Since he's not saved, he's going to take them to another level. New levels you've never seen before or experienced before. Oh, he's going to cut up like crazy. And just about to drive you crazy. Yes, amen. <laughs> <laughs> but it says, you got to keep yourself together yes. and have that godly conduct. Yes. Display Christ. Always. He acting hateful. You be loving. Now, that ain't easy. That ain't easy to do. If somebody's stepping on you and acting like you're not a person but a thing, that's not easy to do. But it works. If a person or wife will be committed to doing it God's way. And guess what? It's not going to happen overnight. That's why you have to continue to do it. It's a continual thing. See, because it's your faithfulness. He'll even get to the place where he gonna, might even just be trying to test you. He, and you really don't know because we can't read people's hearts. He might be at the precipice of saying, wow, you know, I feel like a dog. I've been mistreating her, this and that and the other. And, uh, you know, I, uh, let me test her a little further. But, uh, I, I, I'm about to follow that her God was, boy, she's, this has to be real. Because she's still here, still dealing with me. And see, God knows, Holy Spirit knows how to break him down. Like, you can't break him down. Holy Ghost knows how to do that. And that's why God says to, to handle it this way. Now, verse 21 says, When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. See? They'll begin to change and to be won over when they observe, when they look at, when they, they've been watching you. And if you've been acting like the devil, just like he's acting like the devil, well, ain't no change gonna come. You can't act like he's acting. Then it goes into do not let your adornment be merely outward. In other words, don't just you know, concentrate on the outward appearance. You know, you're looking fine, you're looking good, you're dressing up, you're adorning yourself with jewelry and makeup and hair extensions and getting your nails done and getting your feet done and you're doing all these things and perfume and, and all of that. Concerned about the outward appearance but not the inward appearance. He said, outward, appearing, outward, outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, and putting on fine apparel. He said, rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. That just ain't me. I ain't gentle and quiet. I'm boisterous. My whole family, blah, 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 blah. Quit blaming it on your genes and your family. The Holy Spirit is stronger and more powerful than your genes. Well, my mama had a big mouth and cussed my daddy out up one side and down the other. She didn't take no mess, so I guess I got to, well, are you saved? But you acted like what your mama passed down to you is stronger than what the Holy Spirit is. That's a lie. Amen. Holy Spirit is stronger than your genes. Yes. But you have to surrender. Oh, ugly word. Surrender 
to the spirit. Let him take control. Let him operate in your life. He said, a kill on quiet spirit, which is, what, look, look what he said, very precious in the sight of God. Wow. Look at what God honors. That pre is precious in the sight of God. That gentle, quiet spirit. So this. He's being mean and nasty. Honey, can I get, a, get you a cup of coffee? No. <laughs> Not. Give him a cup of coffee, but he just don't know what I'm going to do to him. I'm going to have the extra something to him. Just something. Mess around with me like this. I'm going to teach him a lesson. You're going to drink the coffee and something else. See, that's, that's wrong. That's the devil. Amen. And some women will go there. Amen. Just to get him back. <laughs> Amen. 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 Oh, we got some truth telling up in here today. Today. Amen. I'm just trying to help somebody. Right. And don't worry, we'll get to the men. But right now, we're on the women. <laughs> For in this manner, verse 5, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. So, in ancient times, this is the way women did. They were submissive to their own husbands. Well, that was back then. This is a new day. Yeah, but God's word never changes. Amen. See, God doesn't care about the times we live in. God doesn't care if it's 5,016. His word remains the same. Amen. Jesus Christ the same today and yesterday and forever. He never changes. Amen. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven, the scripture says. It's, it's immutable, unchangeable, and it won't pass away. Amen. Heaven and earth will fail before one job or two. See, the scripture will not be broken. It said, holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves being submissive to their own husband as Sarah obeyed Abraham calling him Lord whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror notice Sarah respected and honored him so much she called him my Lord she called Abraham Lord. Married ladies, look at your husband right now and call him Lord. Ooh, they're not willing to do it. No daughters of Abraham in here. Ooh, we got some work to do. <laughs> He said, whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. So, if you're going to be a daughter of Abraham or, and Sarah, if you're going to be like Sarah, you got to be willing to submit, honor, and respect your husband just like Sarah respected, honored Abraham. Amen. Amen. No different. No different. And verse verse seven, husband likewise dwell with them with understanding. I think another version says according to knowledge, dwell with them with understanding, 
giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, weaker physically. Women and men are built differently. So she's weaker physically. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Amen. Now, even though we're not getting on husbands yet, uh, I'm going to deal with this scripture. <laughs> Dwell with them with understanding. Wow. Sometimes men can be so dumb. <laughs> hey, we can be dumb. Amen. I'm saying we. Yeah. We can really be dumb. Yeah. We, do, <laughs> we don't dwell with understanding. This 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 means get to know. Your wife, listen to your wife. These are things that have to be learned by a man. Amen. Amen. Mm, I'm, I'm still telling the truth. Amen. <laughs> he has to learn this because men sometimes are know it all. <laughs> Even though they don't know it all. But they will act like it. Sometimes don't want to listen to the wife. But a lot of stuff that she says is valuable and important. Amen. 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 Yeah. I, I, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's been a tough, long, tedious journey. But I've learned how to listen. Come on, wife. I mean, time's passed. Woo! And it took a minute for that word to kind of work itself. But I learned that, you know what, she was right. Sometimes you got to listen. It dwell with her according to knowledge or with understanding. You got to learn her ups and her downs. You got to know uh, uh, those emotional swings. You got to know when that time of the month is coming. You got you to deal with her with, with, with kids' gloves right about now. Because she's just like a lioness ready to pounce upon me. Because she's in a mood. So I got to walk gingerly with understanding. And that doesn't mean be a wimp. Amen. And be a weak back man. Right. It means just be understanding. Right. Watch it. Here's the word sensitive Amen. to her needs. Right. Sensitive to her needs. Amen. Amen. I got the men saying amen and women cry. What kind of women are you? <laughs> He's got to be sensitive. Amen. 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 But she's the weaker vessel, it says. Being heirs together. See, you're in this thing together. Amen. You're one. But the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. When the, the husband is mistreating his wife and acting like he ain't got no sense. <laughs> It's really no need of him praying. No, 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 no. Get up off your knees. I'm going to prayer tonight. No, stay home. Because if you're mistreating her and you're just leaving it there, not making it right, it says that man has mistreated her. He's not, he's insensitive, he's negligent, he's not meeting her needs. It's a list. 
it says his prayers will be hindered. And one, one, the, one the, the main prayer is if this woman is not following the Lord, if she's not following the Lord and he's praying for her salvation and that God will get a hold of her, his prayers are hindered. God's not hearing that prayer. Lord, save this rebellious woman. Do something in her heart. This, that, and the other. And on and on and on. What he might be praying. But if he's mistreated his wife, who he is supposed to be dwelling with according to knowledge, understand this, if he's mistreating her, then there's no need for him to be praying because his prayers will be bouncing off the ceiling, ricocheting right back down to him, going nowhere. Yeah, but you just don't understand, Pastor. This woman is something else. She's got the mouth of the south. <laughs> she wants to cut me up and down and won't shut up. Can't keep her quiet. When she gets on that roll, she ain't stopping until she gets it all out. She wants to hit me below the belt and then hurt me and cut me as deep as she can. Cut my heart out and squeeze it and show it to me. <laughs> Throw it on the ground, pour lighter fluid on it and light it ablaze. That woman is weak. <laughs> It had nothing to do with how she's acting. It has to do with the way you respond. Amen. Some people can't handle that. that, that that's a tough cookie to chew on right there. But if you want your prayers to be heard, husbands, men out there in TV land, YouTube land, you got to dwell with her according to understanding. God wants you to treat your wife right. Treat her right. I wonder if I can get the women just to say, treat her right. Amen. The godly woman is one who strives to obey scripture and not her own opinion. A godly wife seeks to obey the word of God and not what the world or the culture tells her. Don't listen to the culture. Listen to God. I got to close. Verse 22 of her text says, Wives, submit to your, to your own husband that's to the Lord. In other words, that's a command. To submit to the man that God has placed over her life. Watch this one. Whether he's worthy or not. See, this, this has nothing to do with whether he's worthy. Whether he's worthy or not. It is an act of obedience to the Lord, surrendering, surrendering to what God has commanded. And to do it with the right attitude. Amen. To do it with the right attitude. Don't be mad doing it. Don't, don't, don't do it and in your heart you're cussing and fussing. No, you got to do it from the heart. And do it with the right attitude. Amen. Amen. The husband is the leader by position, even if he's not a good, godly leader by function. And if, watch it, and I got it. If he's a henpecked, timid, weak knee type of man, you got to pray for him. And encourage him to be the man that God wants him to be. That means you got to lift him up in prayer. Lift him up in prayer. 
so he can come up. Don't put him down. <laughs> Lift him up. Man, I tell you what. <sighs> Woman sure knows how to put him down. That wife can really put him down. She can put him down lower than anybody else can. Some stuff he can take from us and everybody else before when she does. He's on the ground. Don't criticize and put the man down. All the time. Someone can do that all the time. That's all he is. Put down, put down, put down. Never pick up. Never an encouraging word. You gotta lift him up sometime. Amen. So, ladies, and we got some more to go, but I'm gonna stop right here. But I'll end with this. Ladies, lift him up. Lift him up. I'll stand again. Lift him up.